Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new studio vlog. I hope you're all really well. I'm Shannon and I'm a pet portrait and wildlife artist and I specialise in coloured pencil drawings so if that's of interest to you then keep watching. So I've actually got a super busy week this week and I almost considered not vlogging it because of how much extra time that adds on to the week but I just don't, I wouldn't feel right not vlogging it because I've got a coloured pencil workshop that I'm hosting on Saturday. It's the spring bunny one that I've been talking about for a little while and I just wouldn't feel right not filming that. I was going to do like a dedicated workshop video again like I did last time when I did the Christmas Robin one but because of all the other stuff that I have this week as well I thought I'd just do like a full studio vlog that incorporates everything. So this week I will be doing a lot of prep for the workshop. I won't have to do as much as I did for the last one and this morning I'm actually doing a trial run sort of practice drawing of the bunny that we'll be drawing together. So I chose a reference and this is what I've got so far. I'll be very very honest with you, I've been having like crippling anxiety over this workshop, as ridiculous as that sounds. I've had sleepless nights, I've been tossing and turning, waking up at 3am like every day and not being able to get back to sleep for an hour or so. And it all sort of started when I realised a couple of weeks ago that I didn't have enough people booked onto the workshop to cover the cost of the room rent. So this is a workshop that I've fully sort of organised myself. So I've found a venue, I've booked it out for the day and I'll be purchasing all of the supplies ready for the workshop on Saturday. And I'd sold two tickets up until recently and that would mean I'd have to put some of my own money towards the room cost and basically make a loss on the event. So yeah, that's been playing on my mind a lot and I didn't want to cancel it because I know that uh, one of the attendees had the ticket purchased for them for the birthday and I just felt horrific about doing that because of how long ago they booked the event and stuff as well. So I've just been absolutely like smashing the promotion side of it this past couple of weeks, sharing it on every local Facebook group I can find and stuff like that. And luckily I've managed to book an extra two tickets. So I am feeling so much more at ease about it and I think that's why I'm happy to do a vlog this week now because it's been playing on my mind a lot. I don't like letting people down but I also know that it wouldn't have been a wise business decision to continue with it if I was making a loss. So yes, thankfully that is all good. I've got four attendees and I've actually ordered the supplies already that I needed last week. I've ordered five lots of extra pencils to add to the kit that I've already got. So I've still got one ticket left up for grabs if anyone wants to book on last minute this week. But yeah, I'm feeling so much more at ease about it. I've still not been sleeping right. I don't know why. I've just, I think I've got a lot of things that I'm worrying about at the minute. So I've just, I've been struggling with my sleep lately, but I think once this workshop's done and I'm sort of back into my usual routine, I'll probably find it a little bit easier on myself. I'm going to be carrying on with this bunny drawing this morning. It's not taken me too long at all really, it's probably only taken me about three hours so far, um, but I do like to have an example drawing that I can share around the room so that everyone can see sort of what they're aiming for. And I also like to have like a good idea of the colours that I'm going to put where ahead of the workshop so that I'm not just winging it. I don't like winging things too much. I'm going to get on with this drawing for another hour or so, see how much I get done. Okay, so I chose this reference because I've never drawn a floppy-eared bunny before and it had a lot of the colours that I already have from the previous workshop coloured pencil kit so I didn't have to buy too many more and it's quite like simple enough to draw as well like it's not too over complicated. Yeah I just thought it'd be a nice one to do. I like how it's got a little bit of foliage in its mouth and it just adds a bit more interest. So yeah I'm really pleased with this reference and since choosing the reference I have been feeling a lot more positive about the whole thing so I'm really feeling good about it all now. So yeah I've just been trying to get this done. I'm using the Strathmore Bristol vellum paper from the 300 series for this workshop as well so I'm providing all the materials and I'll be providing like teas and coffees and snacks but I have asked people to bring a packed lunch because I just didn't want the stress of having to organise like lunches for everyone. I'd rather just focus on making like the art side of it as good as possible. Yeah, it's not taken me too long this drawing, which is good because we've only got from 10am till 5pm to draw the whole thing, which I know that probably sounds like a long time, 
but with coloured pencils it's really not like the time just seems to pass you by it goes so fast so yeah I thought I needed to choose something quite simple I've been using a bit more of a simple style than I would for like my commissions and stuff like that just because of the limited time but I think it still looks good it still looks detailed and I know there is going to be like a, a younger person attending as well so I don't want to over complicate it like there's going to be people that aren't as experienced with drawing so yeah I also thought this would come in handy for like any last minute promotions and if I want to share some updates on the local Facebook groups and stuff that are all worth the while I think this would make quite a nice greeting card as well actually I will be taking some greeting cards and stuff just for examples of like what you can do with learning to draw like this like where it could take you what avenues it could take you down and if anyone wants to make any purchases on the day then they can do as well I will catch you up when I've finished okie dokie I feel like I am pretty pleased with the progress of that today I'm gonna leave it there might come back and do some whiskers and extra bits another day this week but I've got the main bulk of it done and I'd be able to start working on my sheets that I'll be providing for the workshop that'll have the colour swatches and recommended like colour placement and stuff but for now I actually have quite a few orders that I need to get started on I've had a couple through on my online shop and I've got one Etsy order and I've had a manual order that I've sort of sent an invoice for that I'm processing outside of my shopping platforms because it's going to Canada. The reason that we've done it that way is because I don't know if you can order things to Canada from Etsy and you certainly can't on my website because I haven't fully set up international shipping. That is actually on my list of things that I need to do. How exciting that it's going to Canada, to Niagara Falls. I really wish when I started this business that I got one of those scratch off maps. You know where you can scratch off like every location that your work has gone to? I really really wish that I did that. I always find it so interesting the sort of places that the orders are coming from like my cards that I make here in Lancashire in the UK are going to Niagara Falls in Canada like I don't know do you not just think that's mad I think that's like crazy but yeah that's made me really happy so I've been getting a few more orders than I was doing last month I do feel like that period between Christmas and spring is a little bit of a, a down period and then things do start to pick up a little bit again as we move towards like Mother's Day, Father's Day, more into the spring and summer. So yes, I am going to be getting on with some of that today. I've got a huge to-do list today. I don't think realistically I'm going to get all this stuff done, but we can make a dent. We can make a start. So for this card order to Niagara Falls, I'll show you the ones that I've already got like done and in stock. I do have a few more to make that I've printed out, but the ones that I have are Lavender Fields, Pheasant, Donkey, Autumn Leaves, Hedgehog, Hare, and a Robin. And then I've also got a cold tit that I need to cut out, Tabby Cat, a Hummingbird, and a Kingfisher. So yeah, quite a big card order for myself. I use the Epson ET8500 printer to print all these greeting cards out and I use Tintoretto Gesso card that I print onto. I have got a full video on exactly how I do all of that that I'll link in the description down below. Um, I have had quite a few questions about where to purchase the Tintoretto Gesso card if you live in the United States. From my understanding it's not very easy to get hold of over there. I mean it's quite difficult to get hold of here to be honest. I was just very lucky that I found a website that sold it for a reasonable price. But yeah I wouldn't know where to get it from in the US. I don't really have access to all of the websites and the shops that they sell it in over there but if anyone knows where you can get hold of it in the US then please do let me know in the comments down below and then I can recommend that to other people. It might be a case that there's something similar that you can get hold of but if anyone does know a good alternative then let me know as well. But yeah I need to cut all of these up and put them into the sleeves and then I can start building the order and packing it into a lovely box. <coughs> Tiny hand in mine, you're five feet off. 
the ground You rest on my shoulder The stars convey the light So fragile in the night In this moment Sometimes I find that I do have to like trim the edges a little bit, you know, like if they don't quite line up perfectly. I don't know why that happens, it's like my printer doesn't always print things perfectly in line, sometimes they're a little bit off. And of course if you're cutting them yourself it's easy to get that a little bit off as well. So I'll just spend a little bit of time trimming the edges down. In this moment, forever be, forever be. This is my printer, it's the Epson ET8500 and I do love it. I have talked a lot about this printer on vlogs. It's brilliant. There's a few pros and cons to it but so far it's doing me well with my little online shop and Etsy and I also ordered some more of the Tintoretto Gesso recently. I've got the 300 GSM card but I was trying to get hold of the 250 GSM to see if that helped with the printer jam issues that I've been having with this printer. It doesn't like anything that's too thick going in this top feed here. It does have a rear feed that you can manually put stuff through. A few people have recommended that. I've tried it, works great, it doesn't get jammed, but for some reason it doesn't let you print borderless, which is like really annoying. Like why isn't there one perfect way of doing stuff? It just it drives me mad. So that's not ideal and it also prints out a little bit wonky and it misses like the end of the image off when I print it that way so that's not going to be a way forward either. But like I said I tried to get hold of the 250 GSM card and every website that I looked on it was pretty much double the price of the 300 GSM that I use because of like the custom fees, the taxes. Yeah it were, it were really expensive and there were like four or five different websites that all sold it but I think they were all the same because they were the exact same price with the same custom fees the same wording and everything on the checkout it were really weird really strange so I just ended up going for the 300 and I'll have to deal with the printer jam issues when they come up yeah that's the only way that I can really make it work for now so that is just something to be aware of with this printer like it does jam sometimes if you use a thicker cardstock like this one but with the Epson and fine art cotton textured natural one that I use for my prints never jams with that but it is an Epson paper so I think one day I would probably have to upgrade to another printer but for now it does the job as you can see the ink levels are getting a little bit low so I think I need to fill those up soon too but yeah I think I need to just have a really good organize of these shelves because they're a little bit messy they're doing my head in I don't know where anything is like all these boxes look the same I find myself getting annoyed at it every day so I'll probably get that done soon too. I've got some new um, boxes to send my larger greeting card orders in and these are even worse than the ones that I had before for like putting them together. They're just, oh, why are these like kinds of boxes just so rubbish? Like when you fold them, they just don't fold in the right place and stuff. I like to just put a little bit of tape on the side of the box there too. Just, it helps keep them in place a little bit. I do find that they tend to just pop out otherwise. So it just keeps the box together a little bit more. Oh wow, that's probably one of the best ones that I've done for quite a while. We always struggle with stamping. I think because it's quite like a small, thin, long logo, it just never quite goes on right, but I'm pleased with that. My stamp is from Get Stamped on Etsy, by the way, if anyone's interested. I do need to get some baby wipes to give it a clean, but for now, it's fine. Okay, so I've just got the invoice up to double check all of the cards. So I've got hedgehog, pheasant, robin, hair, colt it, donkey, tabby cat, hummingbird, kingfisher and a heron which I missed out before and Tana also ordered a lavender fields bookmark so that's the Niagara Falls order. I need to do a little thank you card and then I can get them packaged up. I do like to put a little bit of packing down the sides just to keep everything in place so it doesn't rattle around especially with it being an international order. I always find these quite fiddly to like get into the box proper. There we go. 
Jessica. So thank you Tana if you're watching, I really appreciate your order. I hope you love the cards when they arrive. These are the other two orders, this one's from Etsy and this one's from my online shop. So thank you to Angela and Rita as well if you happen to be watching. Okay, I'm just going to do some emails now while I watch Married at First Sight Australia. I am not a binge watcher of TV. I really struggle to sit and like pay attention to something for longer than an episode or two. But for some reason, this program has like a hold over me. I can just watch it and watch it for hours on end. Like I put it on whilst I do my freelance work and I've been watching it a little bit in the evenings. But wow, I have got through 17 episodes in the past week oh it's been a week since i started it the good thing about doing my freelance work though is that i can just put something on in the background like that is a good oh, Patty wants to come in a good positive about it but yeah this program it's just so juicy so much drama like i know it's contrived and it's like really produced it it's just so like addictive to watch if you don't watch it already then you like a bit of like rubbish reality tv every now and then this program is just the best one if you ask me are you in or are you out, Paddy? Make a decision. Are you coming in or are you going back outside? Come on, make your mind up. It's a very drizzly, horrible day today and I've just been spending the past half an hour to an hour creating some worksheets for my workshop on Saturday. So last time I did one of these for the Robin workshop but I individually coloured all of the swatches on each sheet which took me way longer than it needed to. So I thought this time if I just do these little squares indicating the colour and then I can just print them all out and that's fine. So I've just put like the colours that I used on my practice one in order of what I recommend to use them. So like the base colour would be number one, working from light to dark and I find that even if I'm sort of doing a demonstration and I'm talking everyone through it people will probably sort of go off and do different sections so this just helps to guide everyone through each section so yeah last time they said that that was like absolutely crucial to doing the drawing so I thought I'd definitely include that this time got good feedback for that and then I've measured this out to what I think is the right size to get it the same as my drawing. Paper size will be 7 by 9 and this is a reverse image of the reference because I'm going to get everyone to trace it. I don't want to use carbon paper because it was really difficult to erase last time and I had to be like super super careful not to like mark the paper and I don't want to put that kind of pressure on everyone so if I use like normal tracing paper but reverse the image so everyone's only drawing it twice on the tracing paper then that will save a little bit of time and it'll also mean that it's easier to erase. So I've got a reverse image and then I've got the actual reference which I'll print out on a higher quality photo paper so that it's like really nice and vibrant. So that's pretty much most of the worksheets done. That didn't take me anywhere near as long as I thought it would. So yeah I'm feeling pretty good about this whole workshop thing. I think before I do anything else today I really need to refill the inks on my printer. This is the first time that I've actually had to do that since buying the printer last summer. I can't remember what month it was now but I've been doing a lot of printing since then and to say that this is the first time I've had to refill the inks I think that's pretty good going but it is an eco tank model and they're supposed to be like really good on inks and that's one of the reasons really why I bought it. So I've still got the original bottles that came with the printer when I bought it and I'll be using those to refill them. You're not supposed to let the inks go below the first line, I don't think, so we're getting dangerously close now so it's time to refill them. So I keep all of my spare inks in this box. I really do need to have a sort out. I might do that today actually. I need to reorganise all of my stuff because it's stressing me out. But yeah, there's a little bit left in these bottles. Probably enough to last me a month or two, so that should be fine. Right, I've googled how to do it just in case like there's a special way and I get the impression that you just lift it up with it turned on and then just start filling the ink up. Start with black. This is where I get really paranoid that I'm going to put the wrong colour in the wrong one, even though 
I always check it like two or three times, like, why do I do that? Right, black, definitely black. <laughs> I find this part really satisfying as well. Okay, black, yeah, definitely black. <laughs> Honestly, no matter how many times I check it, I'll still be convinced that I've put the wrong one in. Photo black. There isn't actually that much left in these really, but I've got to make use of it. I do like the system of like putting the inks in. It's really easy to do. It is cyan. I probably could have just done this over on my shelves, but I wanted to make sure I had enough room. I suppose there's actually quite a little bit left in those. Okay, yellow. Magenta. I just love the noise it makes. <laughs> Finally, we've got grey. And this is the one that is the lowest, so. Okay, so about halfway on all of them apart from the grey. So I'm probably going to have to repurchase that one first, but I might have a quick look now actually at how much these inks are in case anyone's interested. So on the Epsom website they're at $15.99 a bottle, so I suppose that isn't too bad and if I only have to fill the grey up soon, that's not bad at all is it, $15.99? Six all together times $15.99 is £95 for the whole set and that's like on the Epsom website so I imagine there'll be websites that you can get like similar ink and stuff like that but I don't know I might go for the Epsom one because I don't want to risk anything going wrong. Okay it's asking which colours are refilled. Okay so I manually set the ink I think that's about right. bit hard to gauge on some of them. <laughs> there we go, so all the inks are done, I've put it back. This printer does actually have a little scanner in the top of it, which I've never used. I have had questions about it before and whether it's any good for scanning artwork, so I might have to try that at some point because if this printer was good for the whole process then it, you wouldn't need to go buy in another scanner like I did with the Canon Lead A300. So I will I will have to test that out at some point, it's just getting round to it. Yeah, I think I need a good organiser now because this is just not the one. I've actually been really kindly gifted this portable label maker which is the PRT QT label maker and I'm really excited to give that a go. I've been dying for a label maker for ages because I really want to label my boxes as you can see behind me. They're just there's all these green boxes and I never know what's in each one. Like I always end up picking out the wrong box and I just think it would be much better if I could start to label what's in the boxes and just sort all that stuff out. So yeah, thank you so much for gifting me that. It's very much appreciated. I am such a sucker for a bit of organisation so this is really going to like make my life easier. I feel like I'll even start putting it on everything like food, stuff in the freezer, like it's just so handy to have a little label maker. So this is the label maker, it's teeny tiny, it's really cute actually. I think it works by connecting it to your phone so I might have to use my iPad so that I can like still film at the same time. But yeah, I'm really excited to give that a go. So it's already got some paper in it, I've just slid the cover off. So I think we're good to go. So I've just had to scan the QR code to download the app. Wow, that's so satisfying. This is the difficult bit now. There we go. Now this box is honestly not the one. <laughs> this is where I just sort of shove all of my gift tag sheets that I've not yet made. I have so many, it's actually getting out of hand. Definitely need to start printing new products. I've got enough gift tags for a long time. I've got sheets that didn't quite print out right that I've sort of just shoved in here because I didn't know what to do with them. Like, where they printed a bit wonky and stuff. <laughs> More gift tags. Gosh, look how many I've got. <sighs> That's actually a little bit ridiculous, isn't it? To be honest, I think the gift tags need their own box and then I can just keep this to bookmarks, even though they're a bit of a mess as well. 
By the way, I've had a few questions about bookmarks too. I still get these from printed.com. I don't make these myself because first of all, the thought of putting a design on both sides and getting it in the right place, too much faff and they're really inexpensive like bookmarks don't cost a lot to get printed. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't always make sense to do things yourself. Right, I've got a spare box from Paddy's Cupboard that I'm going to use to put all of these gift tags in. I feel like they definitely need their own little box. I will go through those one day, but yeah, I definitely need to start doing some different products. How much better is that looking already? Just being able to see what's in the box, that is going to be so much easier. Okay, so I've done the top ones and I've also done some of these bottom ones. So I've got miscellaneous sort of like printer stuff, shredded paper and stationery. And I've also got some of my X-Tool stuff in this box. So that's just looking so much more organised. <laughs> Hello darling. Bless him. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. I need to get the stickers off of these but that can be for another day because I really struggle to get them off. But I've also made a start on some of these ones over here. This is just a complete mess, like Paddy's chewed some of these boxes and everything. That needs a complete overhaul. I need to sort these separators out and stuff because it's just, ugh, it's a mess. And look at all these little bits of paper that are sort of like fallen behind. So that can be for another day, but for now, the main thing I wanted to do was sort out these boxes because I use those like every single day. That's a spur, I don't have anything in that one just yet. Maybe that could be, <laughs> good paddy. Maybe that could be for the biodegradable bags. There we go, I've put them away and I've put a little label on. I also thought as well that this would be amazing for craft fairs because I always really struggle with how to like label the prices on products without individually writing them all out on like little stickers or without printing a lot of sheets before I go. Like I could easily just take this with me and just label things as and when and it'd take two seconds. And because it's not too sticky, I feel like they'd be easy to take off like the products afterwards when you've sold them. So. Yeah, I'm really pleased with that. So if you're interested in grabbing yourself one of these little label makers, I will leave the link down below. Okay, I've printed out the sheets and I ended up just printing the reference photo on normal printer paper because I couldn't get the colours right on the photo glossy paper. Yeah, that's my little swatch sheets. I'm really pleased with those. And I've printed out a few extra references just in case like anyone spills a drink on one or anything like that because you just never know. By the way, Paddy's just chewing on like a yak milk chew thing. So yeah, I think I'm pretty much going to leave the workshop stuff there for the day now. Okay, now I'm working on this portrait of Ansa, the Border Collie, who I've done a portrait of before um, when she was first diagnosed with cancer and unfortunately this one's now a memorial piece because she recently passed away so I'm really hoping that I can do her justice in this piece. I'm just sort of like working on the grassy areas and stuff now just to like finish it off and once this is finished she'll be going all the way over to the US. Very very wet and miserable day today. Does not make me want to go outside anywhere. So I'll just catch you up on a few things that have been sort of going on since the last vlog. So I've been finding that the tutorials to keep have been really good. Like I've sold quite a few of those since I put them on. And to say that I've only got like three or four online, I'm pretty pleased with how that's going. So I do need to continue uploading those. So I'm just using like a few different greens and some yellows and browns just to like build up the different tones in the grass really like taking it slow. So I'm using chrome oxide green 278, earth green yellowish 168, earth green 172 and a bit of cream 102, cadmium yellow 107, <laughs> nougat 178, burnt umber 280, dark sepia 175 and black 199. So wow a lot of colours in this grass alone but it's definitely worth trying to get loads of different tones in there to make it look natural. And the hard bit is like knowing how far to bring the grass out but that's why I just do it really slowly. 
okay today I need to do this slight course to order which means I need to get my X-Tool F1 out and start engraving. Okay so I've got eight coasters that I need to do, seven pheasant ones and one hair. By the way Danny if you're watching I am forever grateful of your support towards my small business it means the world to me. So a little while ago I did a huge order of some slight coasters and these ones are better than the previous ones because they've got a plain back which means that I can put my logo on the back of them. Okay let's do the hair first then because there's one of those and I think that that is the best side to do it on because it's a little bit more distressed at that side. They're obviously all slightly different so yeah I'm gonna pick that side for the hair. Let's do the framing. This is the bit that Paddy doesn't like. There we go, so that took about three and a half minutes and that is the finished engraving. I just love it, I think it's the coolest thing ever. So I've got seven of the pheasant ones to do now and obviously the logos on the back. That looks about right. That's the little pheasant, looking lovely. Oh, I just realised that I didn't turn like the contrast up on it properly so it's a little bit faded. I'll turn it up a bit more on this next one and see how it looks. Oh, that's better, a bit more contrast on that one. So I just need to do that another six times. Okay, that's the last design done now. So I'm gonna start on the logos. So I want the design to be upwards. This literally takes like a few seconds to engrave as well because it's such like a small, simple area. Okay, that's all of the coasters finished and completed now. I've got this box from something that I ordered that I'm just going to reuse because it's nice and strong and it'll fit all of these in. I think I'm going to wrap them in strong brown like craft parcel paper to protect them. Also, I'm so proud of Paddy. I didn't even hear a peep out of him pretty much through that whole engraving process and to say that he used to go mad and I mean he used to go mental barking and getting all stressed out from the beeping and the sounds and stuff and now he just sort of chills he's such a good boy oh, bless him look at his little face i wrap them up in these i hope these all fit right i think i'm pretty pleased with that i need to fill the gaps some packaging that i've saved from and again another parcel that I received. I'm going to stuff that just so that none of it moves. Might even... Oh, pleased with that packaging. I'll be really shocked if I find out these have smashed. Let's put some fragile tape on it as well. Got a very sleepy paddy on my hands, so I think I'm going to use this as an opportunity to get my next Patreon video filmed. Look at that sleepy little boy. So I've actually been working on an extra tutorial for Patreon because the tiger was taking me forever and a day to film the whole thing. I thought it's not fair that the fundamentals to you have had to wait so long for the next full tutorial to do their next focus section. So if I do another mini one that everyone can get involved with then at least there's like a little bit of something until we start the next full animal tutorial. I had a lot of interesting suggestions and I did a little poll over on Patreon and the snake just won and we haven't drawn anything like this before I know that this might not be everyone's cup of tea some people are like terribly afraid of snakes and if you are then I'm very sorry a lot of people also would like to try drawing something different like this so you've got to have a bit of a balance on Patreon and that's why I do the votes and the polls and get everyone's feedback and stuff because then the thing that wins by the majority is the thing that we do like I don't pick the things that we do sometimes the subjects are maybe not my favourite subjects but it's just the most like diplomatic way of doing it but anyway 
Yes, this is what we ended up drawing for this little mini tutorial. So I started on it last week and I'm going to film another section of it now. I think this is going to look really cool when it's done. I also just love the composition of it, how it's just like the snake's head peeking down from the top. So yeah, I'm going to get on with this now, see how far I get. I made the mistake of going and giving Paddy a cuddle halfway through filming and now he's crying at me. I always feel so bad. I won't be long if you would be so kind as to let me film a bit more. Such a needy boy. Well, this is how it's looking so far. <laughs> I feel like I've messed up. <laughs> it sounds like a creaky door. <laughs> moved the whole armchair so that Paddy can be right next to me while I'm filming this Patreon video. Are you happy now darling? You look very happy. Excuse me, the deal is that I move you here and you be quiet now. I can't get you any closer even if I try. I had to cut that one a little bit short because Paddy is just not having it. He keeps trying to play with me and running up and down, his little feet patting along on the floor. So I've managed to get quite a bit of it done though. It's just, everything seems to take me so much longer than it used to. But I can't compare life with a dog filming to life at my mum and dad's with no distractions filming. Like it, it's just different. This is how much I've got done though. I'm pleased with it. I think we're just gonna do the rest of it in the next video. I think if we had a carpet in this room, it'd just make everything so much easier. Like I could still talk and film while Paddy's walking around behind me. It is what it is for now. I make the best of what I've got, so. Here's a little thunder jacket. It is Thursday today and I'm not sure how much I'm realistically going to be able to film today because Scott's going to be coming home soon, he's off today. So I'm not going to have like peace and quiet like normal but I've been getting on with some Patreon video editing this morning and now I'm just carrying on with Unser's portrait. I'm hoping to get the grass finished today and then I can start on my next commission soon. I've got quite a few to get done. So I'm going to my fitness class tonight, hence the active wear. I think I've realised I don't suit black at all. I've been really fascinated by the whole like colour season, colour palette stuff going on on TikTok. As someone who works with colours like every day I'm really fascinated by all that. So yeah I just don't feel like this is like doing doing anything good. But hey ho, I am gonna get on with this. I started watching the new season of Race Across the World last night. It's probably like one of my favourite TV shows ever. It's so good if you haven't watched it before. They basically get a load of couples and they have to travel from a start destination to an end destination. Basically travelling through loads of countries with no flights, no phone, a very limited budget and they have to like race to get there. I think all this like talk of the Kenya trip and whatnot, it's given me like a travel bug. I just want to get out there a little bit. I've been trying out a different mode on my camera. I'm using the cinematic mode and I don't know if it's any good. I don't know if the focus is a little bit off on it. I also realised that I've been filming a lot of these vlogs with the wrong microphone <laughs> attached to my phone. So there's a transmitter and there's like a, a microphone that you can attach to your body and I've been plugging the microphone into the phone rather than the transmitter so so the sound quality of some of the previous vlogs was a little bit off in places but it's all part of the learning process i do think it really helps improve the audio because audio on iphones isn't great like it's it's not the best so i want these videos to be as good quality as i can with the equipment that i've got is that better i feel like that's better it just doesn't have that same like pretty like depth of field that the cinematic mode has but I also don't want it to keep losing focus. 
do some travelling at some point. I'm really hoping and praying that the Kenya trip can go ahead. We need eight people to confirm the trip and go. Currently have three definitely booked on so it's gonna be a challenge making sure that trip's confirmed but we're staying positive we don't want to let the people down that are booked on either now so yeah it's just hard it is I've never promoted a trip before and we're doing our absolute best and do you know what if if it wasn't to go ahead I'm just so grateful for the opportunity and the experience that the whole thing's given me thinking positively about it manifesting it for us I'd say overall I'm quite like a positive person but can sort of expect the worst to happen sometimes right this is hard to film and chat because i need to concentrate i'm gonna get on with this and i will see what i can film later on i don't know if i've mentioned this before but i put all of my mini square prints over on etsy because i only had them on my website and my website's only available for uk delivery really need to have a look at that because Ideally, I want to be able to send things internationally. It's just the settings are a bit confusing with all of like the customs and stuff like that. So I need to have a look at it. But yeah, I just thought in the meantime, I'd pop them over on Etsy and I've had a couple of sales so far. Nothing major, but I've just had another one come through for a barn owl print. So I might get on with making that now. I'm gonna have a little break from Jorin for a bit. This is the print paper that I use for anyone interested. It's the Epson Fine Art Cotton Textured Natural and I really like it. I think it looks lovely with the style of drawings that I do. Looks very similar to like hot press watercolour paper so I need to actually order some more because I've only got a few sheets left. Put double sided tape on each side. Again, acid free. Super important. I like to put backing boards on my mounts because it just it finishes it off, it makes it look more professional. I thought I'd also show you these that I've been working on just to like make the print packaging a little bit better and put like the information on the back. So I've been using Canva for this because I can easily just switch out the images. So I've done so far the woodpecker and the kingfisher. So I need to do the barn owl. So the great thing with Canva is you can literally just drop the images in which is why I'm using it for this. I just need to change all of these now. So what I'm gonna do is just export that as a PDF and print it onto some labels. There we go, so that is the labels printed. Yeah, just can peel them off now and stick them onto the back. I just think it adds a nice extra little finishing touch to the prints because I feel like they were just lacking a little bit of information and branding and stuff. So I put it on the actual print itself so then if somebody was to throw away the, the sleeve, they'd still have information on there. So it has like the size, a little bit about me, and yeah, pleased with them. I think they'll be really good for craft fairs as well because a lot of people pick up the prints and have a good look at them, so I think having that on the back would just help to give a bit more information. Packaging doesn't always have to be like super fancy, it can be quite simple like this where you just print it out yourself. There we go, and I'll leave the link in the description to where I get everything, like these biodegradable sleeves and stuff. And then finish it off with a sticker. Thank you so much, Abigail, if you're watching. I just used one of these like large envelopes. I can't remember where I got these from. It was that long ago now. Literally like two or three years ago I bought these, so. Yeah, I'm not too sure, but they're actually classed as a large letter when you're sending it at the post office so yeah they're good for that and I'll just pop that in there when that's dry and then that's that. Okay this is what we're working with today I'm just trying to do any last minute bits for the workshop this morning I've added the little whiskers and stuff into the example piece just so that that's finished I've got my list of things that I need I've got the old one from my last workshop just so that I can compare and see if there's anything missing I ordered these um, eraser pencils for doing the little whiskers and stuff because the Tombow erasers, as good as they are, they're quite expensive to buy. I'm really impressed with how that's performed. So it's only about, oh, hello, Pad Pad. <laughs> 
it was only about five or six pounds for the whole pack so this is the current situation on the floor that's the box that i'm taking i'm just packing everything one by one to make sure that i've got it all this is gonna have my tripods in i'm literally just gonna take every single tripod i've got and see what is like the best setup on the day because i don't know how i'm gonna set up my webcam to do the filming part I'm probably going to take this with me. Yeah, I'm going to go up a little bit early in the morning to figure all that out. Sorry for the noise in the background. I'm going to take Padster for a little walk soon and get some food bits while I'm there. Just some like pastries for breakfast and snacks and stuff. I've asked everyone to bring a pat lunch, but I'd quite like to provide something. So I've got my envelopes for the drawings to go in at the end. Tracing paper. We are going to go through the drawing the outline in this workshop, so... Uh, just some paper to rest your hand on, spare drawing paper and I've got all of the work packs, pretty much everything that I showed you um, on the computer. I've got my webcam, my BenQ IdeaCam Pro, I've got my card machine because I'm going to take some greeting cards just for like examples and if anyone wants to buy any. Uh, masking tape to stick the tracing paper down. Erasers, I have ordered some new ones but I don't know if they'll come. They should be arriving today. But if not, I've got loads of ones that from the last workshop. I don't want to go buying new ones every time. I don't know. Let me know. Is that gross? To use the same erasers or should I be getting new ones each time? I'm not sure. Got the coloured pencils. I need to do some little uh, strings like this to do the sets for everyone. Okay, I've been and got some pan of chocolates, croissants and snacks like brownies and stuff. And now I'm going to sit down and film the next part of the Tiger tutorial. I've got time so it's all good. And I'm going to finish off any last bit of packing later on this evening. So I think I'm pretty much sorted. Apart from my laptop and stuff but I won't pack them till I'm finished with them today obviously. So yeah, now I can just sit and do this. There we go, that is the finished part that I've just filmed. I'm really pleased with how that water is looking. Let's do a little zoom in. I was worried it might take the focus away from the drawing but I think it actually just adds to it so yeah I'm really pleased with that and now I'm gonna get on with some last minute things and I will catch you up in the morning when it's the day of the workshop. <laughs> Forever be, forever be. 